Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's now m my pleasure uh, to yield five minutes to uh, another great new uh, freshman, uh, Representative Zach Space of Ohio. Thank the you to my colleague. is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to share with you my belief that we, as a people, are at a crossroads unlike any in our history. We've seen our manufacturing-based economy assaulted by the forces of globalization, the challenges of the ensuing revolution in energy production squarely upon us, and we're at the dawning of a new understanding of the fragileness of our environment. All of these things are, in their own right, seminal concerns of profound scale. But in spite of the gravity and import of these issues, there is perhaps no more compelling matter before us than that of the war in Iraq. My colleagues on both sides of the aisle are distressed by the tragic turns that this war has taken. I do not at this moment, nor do my colleagues, I presume, wish to dwell upon the motivations or a lack of candor exhibited by our president in letting slip the dogs of war. But do I long for leadership? Leadership seasoned and honest enough to admit when a mistake has been made. Leadership that has a vision for the future. Leadership able to meld the inherent wisdom of man with the realities of the modern world. Under our form of government, it is the president who is singularly endowed with this leadership. Yet at this critical historical moment, our call for leadership and inspiration has been unmet. And as a result, Mr. Speaker, I today voice my opposition to the President's plan to deploy additional troops to Iraq. The crisis that Iraq has become will not be resolved merely with more, more, more. More troops, more tours and deployment extensions, more injuries, more deaths. Simply providing more without a blueprint is not enough. Without a clear plan and a clear objective, a troop increase will not help our Iraq policy. In fact, it will only deepen the disaster that Iraq has become. And I do not utter these thoughts lightly. I share these sentiments knowing that all of the people that I represent will not necessarily agree with me. I fear that my remarks will be misconstrued as reflecting something less than a full commitment to the brave men and women who have served or are serving their country in uniform or to those heroes who have given their very lives for this cause. Let there be no mistake, Mr. Speaker. I have at the very heart of my motivation for these remarks a sincere appreciation for the sacrifice of our brothers and sisters who have been dispatched to fight this war. They and their families, by extension, have been called into action under trying circumstances. And I am profoundly moved by their sense of courage and dedication to country. In fact, it is my admiration and respect for our brave warriors that motivates my decision to express my dissatisfaction with the President's plan to subject more of them to the ravages of war. To date, over 3,000 Americans have fallen in this war. All of them love their country enough to place themselves in harm's way in her defense. All of them left behind their families who will never stop grieving. All of them have been deprived of the pleasures and privileges of a full life, just as we who remain have been deprived of the contributions to our society that each one would have given. Fifteen young men from Ohio's 18th district have died in this war. All of them were loved dearly. Their fathers, sons, brothers, and husbands. Ohio's 18th is exclusively rural in its makeup, dotted by one small town and village after another. Our people are decent, hardworking, and imbued with a strong sense of personal responsibility. Our community is close-knit and supportive. The death of each one of these brave soldiers was met with a deep sense of communal grief. This resolution stresses a message that many believe in. We support our troops. We support their commitment to and sacrifice for our nation. We support their families and those of the fallen in their silent and eternal heartache. We cannot ever fully understand their pain, but perhaps we can learn from it. Mr. Speaker, 
I cannot support a troop surge without real answers as to how it will bring success in Iraq. I cannot support escalation without regard to diplomacy, without regard to the political realities of the region, and without regard to the underlying dynamics of this conflict. There is an unspoken pledge between a soldier of war and the mechanisms of power. That warrior unquestioningly, unquestioningly serves, defends, and if need be, dies. In consideration, he expects his government the time to only the place him in harm's expired. way when need be and only through a painfully staked, thought-out plan for victory. Our troops have fulfilled their pledge to our country. It is time that our country fulfilled its pledge to our troops. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.